crossing the Sahara Desert on a self-built solar bike. The German solar bike team is about to enter Africa after cycling 2,800 kilometers through Europe. And with that, a new chapter on the race adventure is about to begin. Uh, I think in Morocco is kind of really the start of the sun trip. Leaving the European paradise and entering Africa makes all race participants face new challenges. From green forests to sand dunes in the south, they will experience the full variety of Morocco. The German solar bike team took the ferry boat from Tarifa to Tanger and makes their way now further to the south along the coast. They had sunny days and perfect conditions for recharging their batteries with the onboard solar panels. Jonas is da jetzt in so einem uh, Postgeld office und versucht uns Geld zu organisieren. After they had some money changed, the first real challenge was waiting for them. Seven months after the catastrophic earthquake southwest of Marrakesh, all race participants have to conquer this track on their solar bikes. About 40 kilometers, 50 kilometers before the mandatory stop. There's a mandatory stop in Taradont. You, we have the Tizian Test Pass, which is not a very well heard of mountain pass. In Morocco, it's, it's fairly famous, but worldwide, it's not like uh, Abdouez or something. But it's a big mountain pass. The first time on this whole trip we thought about giving up because the roads were way too bad. It was horrible to ride and to make it even more challenging we got the first flat tire after we've done like 300 meters of elevation. So uh, yeah, luckily we picked up a spare tire in Marrakesh and we were able to fix it at the side of the road and continue climbing up. For me, the most special thing is how people react if they see us the very first time. It's a solar-powered electric bike for two riders. They've never seen something like that before. And it's so nice to see them taking photos and videos of us. And after that, ha having a chat and talking about our travel together, that makes me so happy and uh, that's very nice. After two days of crossing the earthquake area, we finally made it up to TZN Test Pass. We are now at 2070 Höhenmeter over the Meeresspiegel. We are now completely in the Wolken, it is ice cold. We have managed, we are above. But it was so freezing cold that we decided to lose no more time and straight up roll down to Tagodan to get our 24 hour well needed rest. We made it to Tarudant. Uh, this is my room. Here are my clothes. I washed all of them by hand here in the shower. And now we have the time to check the bike, do some fixes and repair everything for the desert. Besides making some repairs to their bike, they also had a lot of fun testing some locals' bikes. And how are you? Ganz cool. Ganz cool, my guy. And now off to the dunes. It's finally time for race days through the Sahara Desert. With rising temperatures and decreasing population density, the German solar bike team sets off through the most beautiful landscapes. Crossing a desert by bike is something completely different and involves a lot of planning and calculating, especially when it comes to water and the whole food situation. There are less stores, there are less options to refill all your bottles, so we had to carry a lot with us, but also don't overload the bike, 
to get the maximum out of it. One big struggle was for sure thinking about technical challenges and problems. What happens if the bike gets stuck, if we have technical breakdowns so we can't continue. Uh, we don't want to stand at the side of the road without water or something to eat. That's why we had to calculate everything. But even they were not untroubled by technical problems, as they had broken spokes in the rear wheel several times and had to make emergency repairs. Same as in Europe, the German team camped each night in their tent, which made it hard to get full rest and recovery, especially when people came to their tent at night. Viele Menschen laufen überall auf den Feldern rum. Es gibt keine Wälder oder keine, keine naturbelassenen Bereiche, in denen man irgendwie zur Ruhe kommen könnte. Also es sind wirklich überall Menschen. Ähm, und das war ein bisschen ein Problem, wenn man dann sich natürlich was sucht irgendwie in der Wildnis. Dann passiert es halt gleich, dass zwei Leute mit dem Motorrad kommen, dann kommen nochmal zwei andere zu Fuß angelaufen, beobachten einen. Da fühlt man sich dann natürlich nicht wirklich sicher. I think Gillian and Jonas did a lot better than me. They were camping almost every night, which is real sun trip spirit. Uh, I think I used my tent like three or four times. I was really trying to avoid using the tent because when you're on your own, it's, it's so much wasted time in the day. You have such limited time and to put the tent up and take the tent down and do all the cooking and everything just takes longer when camping. I would try and just find any accommodation I could, random hostels or, or auberges or hotels or anything I could find really to avoid camping. Yeah. But waking up to the first sunlight in the tent was what made the trip so special for the Germans. Plenty of sunshine is great for the solar output of the solar bikes. However, it's not just the sunlight that affects the efficiency of the solar panels. The operating temperature is also crucial. As temperatures rise, the solar yield decreases. And in the desert, Daytime temperatures can exceed 50 degrees Celsius. Fortunately, the two are sitting in the shade. For me, I actually loved riding through the desert. I thought it was really cool. It was like really a cool part about the adventure. Uh, the roads are pretty good because um, they don't, it never freezes. <laughs> so they last forever. But it was definitely hard, uh, long roads and hot weather and long days. Uh, but it's just such an epic landscape with the camels and everything else. It's kind of what we all signed up for at the beginning. <laughs> With great anticipation, they finally left the barren and monotonous desert after 2,500 kilometers. After 13 days in Morocco, they make their way to Chef Chowan. To keep third place in the race, they will have to maintain their daily average and also go full speed back in Europe. Let's continue to follow the German team in the next video and subscribe to the channel to make sure you don't miss out on the next episode. Hey,